afternoon and welcome. My name is Marie Strauch. I'm the educator with Your New School. Today's webinar is going to be on the Color Lab Custom Blend Airbrush System. Um, so we're going to go through a PowerPoint and then I'll switch my camera on and I'm going to show you how to disassemble and reassemble and clean your airb airbrush gun and how to use your airbrush gun. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. So welcome to Color Lab Custom Blend Cosmetics. If you're ordering our airbrush system, this is the starter package. It includes your foundations, two blushes, two highlighters, um, and some toners, mixing cups, empty bottles, ball bearings, makeup saving setter mist, um, and of course the airbrush unit itself to apply your airbrush makeup. So let's go through some product knowledge, not really product knowledge, but more about how to use your airbrush gun and some do's and don'ts and who can benefit from airbrush. So we're gonna go through a few questions and get those questions answered. So who benefits from airbrush makeup? Actresses, actors, models, brides, really anyone who wants a flawless finish. Who, how often can airbrush makeup be worn? You can wear airbrush makeup every day. It is a healthy, lightweight makeup that allows your skin to breathe with a flawless finish. Can the Color Lab airbrush system be used for photography? Absolutely, it can. Um, it is non reflective, it contains micro pulverized minerals in it that do not reflect light. So it is great for photography. Can the airbrush makeup be custom blended, or do you have to use ready to wear the ready to wear line? Um, the airbrush can be used with either. You can make your own airbrush makeup using our matte liquid foundation in equal parts with makeup saving setter mist, which is gonna thin it out so that it's thin enough to be dispensed through your airbrush gun. Um, so yeah, you can make your own. We have bottles if you decide to make your own foundation to create your custom colors and have that in stock or again you can use the ready to wear you can also custom blend the ready to wear um, if you're if you have the complete ready to wear foundation system and for airbrush and your client skin is between two different shades you can mix those two shades together and um, dispense it that way as well so let's get more personal with our airbrush gun itself so the color lab Airbrush system is a single action machine, which means that air and makeup is being released by pushing or pulling back on the trigger. Um, there are dual action airbrush systems and single action. A dual action airbrush gun means that you need to push down on the trigger first to release the air and then pull back on the trigger to dispense makeup. So when you turn the unit on, there's no air coming out of the airbrush gun. With a single action, which is our machine, when you turn your air compressor on, the, the hand, your gun is automatically gonna dispense air. So you'll feel air coming out of it. And then to dispense the makeup, you just simply pull back on the trigger. So that's the difference between a dual action <coughs> and a single action machine. So here's your airbrush gun itself. The gun can be fully disassembled and reassembled. So we fully disassemble it when we are cleaning it um, so that you can make sure that you do not have any makeup built up on the inside of the gun. So you want to make sure when you're cleaning that you are disassembling the entire unit. So be sure to clean your airbrush needle before and after each use. You do not want any makeup to get dried on the inside or even the outside of the unit or the handpiece. Um, so just really make sure that you're cleaning that out. If there is makeup built up on the inside of the airbrush gun, um, you're not going to be able to dispense your makeup properly. It's going to spit the makeup out or it's not going to dispense at all um, because it's clogged. If that happens, um, I I use makeup remover and isopropyl alcohol in the unit and I try to push the with the airflow, try to get that makeup 
remover in there to break down the makeup. Um, but it is really important that you keep your unit clean before and after every use to ensure that there is no buildup. If you are using custom blend makeup, um, be sure to add equal parts of your Makeup Saving Setter Mist with the matte liquid foundation. That is what we use to make the airbrush makeup. And then before you begin, um, always practice on a paper face. This is going to allow you to get familiar or custom, um, accustomed to your gun. Um, it's gonna help you learn how to control the pigment and control the air that's coming out of your airbrush gun. And then once you've gotten the hang of using it, then transition to practicing on a live model. I, I, you can try to do makeup applications on a paper face, um, which is great, but there's nothing like applying, getting the hang of it on an actual person. So the best way to practice is on um, somebody that loves you and that won't mind if you make mistakes. But before you could begin, once you are comfortable with your airbrush gun and you are ready to do your first live model, make sure that your client has removed all of their jewelry and that you're draping their clothing with a cape. It's recommended that you use either a black or a white cape when doing makeup. You definitely don't wanna have them wearing a red, a blue, green, purple cape. Um, you don't want any color. You don't want that color to reflect onto their skin because when you're doing makeup, if you're doing color correction, you don't wanna accidentally blend together a foundation that's a little on the cooler side to cancel out warmth that you see in their skin tone that really isn't there. And it's because you're, they're wearing a red cape or they're wearing a red sweatshirt and you don't have a cape to drape them. Um, if you don't have a cape, either use a white towel or a black towel, but you just wanna make sure that you're draping and protecting their clothing. Always shake the airbrush makeup prior to use to make sure that it is fully blended. I will show you what a makeup uh, airbrush makeup looks like when it's been sitting for a few minutes and it begins to separate um, because again, it's made with matte foundation and makeup saving setter mist. So that does separate. So you always wanna give the airbrush makeup a good shake. When you're ready to begin, you're gonna put about six to 10 drops of the makeup into your airbrush cup. Um, this is a good amount so that it doesn't accidentally spill out if you tilt your hand while you are applying makeup and it doesn't go dripping everywhere. The cup is definitely going to hold more than six to 10 drops, um, but six to 10 drops is a good amount for a full face of foundation um, without it dripping out of the cup in case, again, you tilt your hand. Use only your pointer finger on the trigger when you are dispensing makeup, this is going to control the pressure. Be sure to hold the airbrush gun at a 90 degree angle when spraying onto the face and always keep your hand in motion when you are applying airbrush makeup. If you steady your hand or stop moving and you're dispensing makeup, you create a hot spot. All right, so distance that you need to keep when you are applying makeup. For eyeliner, you wanna be a half inch away from the face using a low PSI at about two to three. For eyeshadow, you wanna be two inches away using a low PSI at about four. For blush, you wanna be four inches away using a medium PSI, anywhere from six to eight. And then foundation, you wanna be six inches away from the face at a high PSI, 10 to 12. Um, I personally do not do eyeliner or eyeshadow with my airbrush gun, I only do foundation, highlighting, contouring, and blush. And even sometimes blush, I don't use airbrush. Um, if there's a specific color I'm looking for and I don't have it, um, I will use powdered. But I, I love doing foundation with airbrush and then everything else I do with powders. Um, and that's just me as personally as a makeup artist. But if you are somebody who wants to dabble with doing eyeliner, eyeshadows with your airbrush unit, um, by all means, definitely try it and see if you like it. I just have more control and I feel like there are just more colors available with powders. All right, so your application, you wanna start with a clean face. So make sure that your client has cleansed, moisturized, and then has also applied a primer such as the Color Labs Fringe Benefit. You'll apply concealer in a traditional fashion and then you'll choose your foundation color. I 
pick my foundation the same as I would test out normal foundation. So I'll take a couple of shades of my ready to wear airbrush makeup. I put a couple of drops in a palette using a Q-tip. I test it out on the jawline to find the color that best matches my client. You're gonna apply the foundation with your airbrush gun. Keep the airbrush moving while applying the foundation to not create thickness or hot spots in one area. If performing photography makeup, choose a contour color, approximately one to two shades darker than the foundation color. Set your PSI to six to eight and spray four inches away from the face. You should not see your contour in the camera or when you're visibly looking at the, your client's skin, but the camera is definitely going to pick it up. So again, for contouring, one to two shades darker, then your foundation color, set your pressure at six to eight PSI and you wanna be about four inches away from the face. And again, you're not gonna see the contour, but you will pick it up on camera. So I always recommend that you have a, your cameras available, your cell phone with the camera, snap a picture just to make sure that your contour is blended and looks good on camera. For blush, you're gonna choose your blush color. If you are gonna be using airbrush, you're gonna apply it in small circular motions. You wanna set your PSI to six to eight and you wanna be anywhere from two to four inches away from the face. If you're gonna be highlighting, you're gonna choose your highlight. You're gonna to apply to the desired area, keeping that PSI at between six and eight and you wanna be about two to four inches away. And then you'll set your makeup application with traditional setting powder. For the eyeshadows, you can choose your eyeshadow colors. Um, eyeshadow formulas consist of two parts of blended toner to one part makeup saving setter mist. We have a booklet that you can refer to that already has um, recipes for eyeshadow colors already in there. If you are familiar with the Color Lab Custom One Foundation System, that's where you'll find all of our toners that we use to make our foundations, adjust the foundation and concealers. And those same toners are what we use to make airbrush eyeshadows. And then make sure that you are saving your client's makeup choices on their file, especially if you are doing a bride and you've done a practice run and you're both satisfied with the outcome, make sure that you write down everything that you used um, so that when it's the big day, you don't have to re-blend anything or retest out the foundation color. You know exactly what to use and you can get right to the application. When cleaning your airbrush gun, you wanna make sure that you spray out your makeup in onto a paper towel until the cup is empty. You can add water to the cup to be sure that all the makeup has been pushed out. You can place a few drops of distilled water or isopropyl alcohol in the airbrush cup and run that through until it sprays clear. Um, you can use a cotton swab to clean the inside of the makeup cup as well as the nozzle of your makeup gun. To clean the tip or the nozzle of your airbrush gun, make sure that you pull back on the trigger so that it retracts the needle so it's not exposed. And then you can go in with a cotton swab with your isopropyl alcohol and clean the inside of the nozzle. And then you can retract the needle. So always practice prior to using the airbrush gun on someone's face. Get to know the airbrush and how it works. Remember with practice, you will continue to improve your airbrush skills. So for more information on Color Lab products, you would contact the account executives at your new school. We only sell to beauty schools. So make sure you have your school administrators or your educators reach out to the account executives um, for more information. And then for future webinars, your schools can always contact myself. So I'm gonna flip my other camera on and we will, well, I will take apart my airbrush gun and show you how to properly clean it. Um, so hopefully I'm gonna close my blind so we can get rid of those sun beams. There we go. All right, so let's take apart this gun. 
So here is our air compressor. It is pretty small. It doesn't take up too much space. Um, you plug, it's got a detachable cord. So you just plug that in and then that gets plugged into an outlet. You have your power button and your mode. When you first turn your unit on, it's going to be at the maximum PSI. And every time you hit mode, it's going to lower your PSI and then re bring it right back to max. We also have these little holster pegs that you can slide in. If you're lefty or righty, you can put it on either side of the unit. And then you have your actual gun itself. Um, so again, this is a single action. So when you turn the compressor on, air is going to be coming out. So you'll feel the air. It is a single action. So all you need to do is push back on the trigger and makeup is dispensed. So when you're holding it, I kind of hold it like a pencil and keep my finger on top and I pull back on the trigger. If you had a dual action gun, a dual action gun is you have to push down on the trigger first. So you push it into the gun and then pull it back. And that is what's going to trigger the air to come out and then the makeup to come out. Um, so again, for our gun, it's a single action. So you just need to push back. So we're gonna take our unit apart. This comes off completely, the nozzle. So you can take this front piece off when cleaning it. I usually do that after I've done a makeup application. So right now it is clean and you should be able to see where the needle would be. If I retract my needle and push back, you should see like a little hole that just appeared. That means the needle is pushed into the gun. And when I bring that back out, it disappears because that means the needle is right there. So air is coming out, but no makeup. When you push back on the trigger and it pulls the needle in, then makeup is being dispensed. All right, so let's take this apart. So the handle completely unscrews. There's a bolt. We're going to loosen that bolt and we're gonna slide our needle out. When you're cleaning your needle, make sure that you are on a cushioned surface. Don't drop your needle. They're pretty expensive. They run anywhere from 35 to up to $45, depending on the brand. Um, so just make sure that you are taking care of it. You don't want the tip of the needle to be broken or bent. Um, if it's broke or bent, it's going to spit makeup and you're not going to get a nice even application for your makeup. So when you're cleaning your needle, make sure you've washed your hands. You're gonna take a tissue and I'm using 90% isopropyl alcohol. And I'm going to clean my needle and I'm just gliding the needle through my paper towel. So this is what I do before I even begin. I already know my gun is clean because I cleaned it beforehand, but I just wanna make sure my needle is clean. And then I'm gonna slide my needle back in very gently. And you're gonna push until it doesn't go any further. And then you're gonna tighten the bolt. You just don't wanna over tighten it. You just wanna screw it until it stops and then just give it one little, one little turn just to make sure it's nice and tight but not too tight and then tighten put your handle back on and then make sure that your needle retracts if you're looking down the barrel and you see that it is let's see if that auto focuses or not and you should be able to retract your needle all right so we're going to fill this needle cup or our makeup cup up with some foundation. And I'm gonna grab my daughter and I'm gonna use her as our model. Um, I already know that she is light ivory. So I don't know if you can kind of see this in the bottle, but the makeup has separated. Well, this one's kind of hard to see. Let's see if I can find one that's more full. Okay, so here you can kind of see it's darker at the bottom and it almost looks like pinkish on top. That is the Makeup Saving Setter Mist. It's separated, so you always want to make sure that you shake your foundation to mix it back up. Oh, here's a better example. So just shake it back up. 
before you're going to apply. All right, so I'm gonna fill this and I'll put it in the holster. And then we will, I'll grab my daughter. She's actually a little lighter than this, but this is the lightest shade I have. I, I need to order more um, colors. And so this is what we're gonna use because this is the lightest one I have. All right, let me grab her. Actually, let me adjust to make sure the camera is okay. And then I'll grab her. All right, let's switch cameras really quick. Um, yeah, I think that's okay. Let's, let me raise the seat maybe. That might be better for her when she comes over. Um, yeah, I think that'll work. All right, let me go grab her. And she's already cleansed. She's already moisturized. She's already put primer on. So we're ready for the foundation. So again, I only use the airbrush for foundation. I don't do eyeshadows or eyeliners. Um, I might do blush sometimes if it's the color. I will do blush on her um, just so that we can do a blush application, but I usually just do foundation. All right, let's switch spots, kiddo. Have a seat. All right, so, oops, sorry. I'm gonna push you closer to the camera without running over my dog. She's sleeping. Okay. All right. I think we are, I think we're okay. Okay. All right. So concealer. I would put concealer on in a normal makeup application. Um, she really doesn't need concealer, so I'm not I'm gonna put concealer on her. I'm just gonna do a foundation application. And then I'm gonna grab some tissues. I'm gonna grab my alcohol. I'm gonna grab some blush. Do you want me to do highlight again? Mm -hmm. Highlight, blush. She's got the perfect oval face. I don't need to do any contouring really. So we don't really need to do contouring. So we'll definitely do blush. We'll do highlight. She likes the, the like lighter pinky purpley highlight. We also have a gold shimmer. So this one says pink shimmer, but it looks purple to me. Um, so we have a pink shimmer and a gold shimmer highlight. Um, gold, but we're going to use pink and then we'll use do you want the shimmer blush? Sure. All right, so we already have our foundation in there. I grabbed some extra tissues so that we can clean our unit out between. I need to be on the right, sorry. I can't do it from the opposite side. So, all right, so I've got it on. So we are doing, don't worry, we're not using that color. I need the hose on this side of you. And we're gonna turn the unit on. So I have that at our maximum. So we are going to keep our unit about six inches away from her face at a higher PSI. So what I'm gonna do on this side of her face, I'm gonna do a correct application. On this side of her face, we're gonna do all the things you shouldn't do. So we're gonna stop moving our hand we're going to create hot spots. We're going to create a very harsh blush. Um, you know, we're gonna to be too close to the face at a high PSI so you can see what happens with, when you're doing that. So that's what we're going to do. Quit being so tired. All right, so I like, now air is already coming out so she can already feel the air. Before I start, dispensing, I'm going to get my hand in motion because again, if you stop and dispense, you're going to put a spot right on their face. So keep the hand in motion.
90 degrees. And I'm gonna grab more so that we can make a mistake on the other side. So on this side, I'm gonna keep my hand in motion, but I'm gonna be a little closer to her face because I got this on max. And I'm also going to kind of stop, kind of jerk my hand. I'm just kind of getting the rest of the makeup out. All right, so let's take a look at, can you get closer to the camera? Why are you so bright and I'm not so bright? You are so pale. She is extremely pale. Turn the other light off. Okay. So she's a poor model. This is not a good, she is so fair. Um, her, on this side of her face, we have, is that not working? She's trying to adjust the ring light. All right, sit back. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna turn the other one back on. out any excess makeup. Um, so on her one side of her face, the foundation is extremely heavy. There are a lot of hot spots on there and you can see that it's wet and you have to wait for that to dry. It should not look wet. It should not feel wet. It should just feel like air. So if it's feeling wet on their skin, that means you are way too close and the um, foundation is gonna be way too heavy and it's not gonna look good in, photograph in photos. Right now I just added alcohol to the makeup cup. I'm blocking the airflow and pulling back and it's causing the air, the alcohol to bubble. That's how I know it getting through so it's pushing alcohol rotating it through the unit and then I'm just spraying out I don't know if you can see it's spraying out or not All right, we're gonna troubleshoot because my needle is not retracting and I don't know why it's not retracting. It was just dispensing just fine. All right, let's try this one more time and see if I can get that alcohol out. There we go. Now it's spraying. I can see it, it's spraying. There we go. You guys can see it against my t shirt. It was not spraying for some reason. So either I didn't tighten that bolt tight enough when I put my unit back together. Um, so it, uh, the needle wasn't retracting. So that bolt wasn't tight enough. So that can cause the airbrush to not dispense makeup or in this case, alcohol. So I'm just letting air flow through just to dry the unit so that no alcohol is gonna be spraying out. I'm just letting air flow through, get rid of all that alcohol. And I'm gonna add my blush. So 
So on the correct side, we're going to do small circular motion. I'm going to lower my PSI to medium. I'm going to be a little closer to her face, not so far away, because um, the airflow now is softer. So if I try dispensing, I'm not going to get enough makeup onto her face. So I need to be a little closer. So I want to be about two to four inches away. I'm going to start doing circular motions, and then I'm just going to gently dispense my makeup and get her blush. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to really get too close to her face and I'm really going to keep my hand, instead of circular, I'm just gonna kind of just shake my hand as opposed to doing circular motions. And so here's the correct side. Let's go on this side. So I am too close to her face. Um, and when I got too close and wasn't really moving my hand, it created this hot spot. Um, and now it's just too heavy. So if this happens, you, you're, you have to remove it. You can take a makeup sponge and try to sponge it and blot it out, um, but it's just easier to wipe it and start over. So I'm gonna grab those tissues again. I'm going to spray out my excess makeup. You'll hear the gun gurgle um, when it's empty. I'm going to spray this out until my tissue is clear, which it's pretty clear. I'll do it one more time just to make sure. And I'm not getting any color. I'm gonna let air kind of flow through that to dry it out. I'm gonna check the very tip of my brush or airbrush gun. So there's makeup just sitting and cooling right here. So I'm gonna grab a Q-tip. I'm gonna spritz it with some alcohol. I'm gonna retract my needle. So make sure you pull back on the needle and clean that out and get all that makeup out of there. Because I'm gonna do a highlight color, which is much lighter than my blush and my foundation. So I don't wanna accidentally blend that in. I don't want that blush color or the foundation color mixing in with my highlight color. And then suddenly she gets little speckles of blush or foundation where it's supposed to be a highlight. Um, so we're going to clean that out. Give our highlight a shake. I just missed the cup on that last drop. So I'm just going to put my tissue under there and wipe that clean. Turn my air compressor on. I'm going to set that to a lower PSI. And I'm going to be about two inches away from her forehead. So I like to highlight forehead, bridge of the nose, cheekbone, sometimes the cupids bow, depends. So again, I want to be, I'm going to turn your head for a second. So I want to be about two inches away and I'm just going to keep my hand in motion. 90 degrees from that curve of her head. On this side, I will purposely get really close. And she flinched because it feels wet. Like it is wet and hopefully it won't drip. Um, so definitely way too close when on this side of her face. So right now it's like, it looks like somebody just took some iridescent powder and just smudged it right on her cheek. Um, but for the rest of her face, she's got a nice highlight. So you can see how much brighter, let's see if I can block this light, but she's so bright right here. And that is such a sharp, harsh line of her blush where on this side, it's just a nice contour. Now, what you can't see on camera 
Um, she does have a birthmark on her cheek. It's a very light um, hemangioma. It's like broken capillaries and she was born with it. So it's her birthmark. And we don't, I don't ever conceal birthmarks I, unless my client wants me to do. I love freckles. I love birthmarks. I think they are beautiful and you should just embrace them. Um, so we do that. We don't cover her birthmark. We love it. But the airbrush foundation covered it beautifully. Like you can barely see that she has a birthmark right now from the naked eye because it is completely covered from the foundation. Um, so even the very little bit of airbrush foundation gave her this flawless finish um, to her skin, you know, except for that side of her face. Um, so it gave her such a beautiful, flawless makeup application. And at this point, this is when I would go in with my traditional eyeshadow, eyeliners, um, brow, pencils, lip liner, lipsticks or glosses, and I would finish the makeup application with powders. And then to set your airbrush makeup, um, I like to use Flawless Finish, which is just a translucent loose powder. You can use any loose powder, um, to any translucent powder to set your foundation. You can also use the Makeup Saving Setter Mist and just give them a quick mist to set the foundation. And that is pretty much all I do. I don't, um, again, I don't do eyeshadows. I don't do eyeliner with airbrush. Um, I don't have all the colors and I don't like having to make all these eyeshadow colors when I can just open up a palette that has every color under the sun. Um, so again, I like to use shadow, regular eyeshadow, um, regular eyeliner and your traditional lipsticks. I just use my airbrush unit for foundation, highlighting and contouring and that's it. And even sometimes I don't even do highlighting. I'll do contouring and I'll do my foundation and then I'll just go in with a regular powdered highlighter and just highlight where I need to be, where I need to highlight. It just depends on the client and what I'm doing. Um, so that completes our application. You may go wash all of that off. I'm gonna turn the camera back onto the other camera and then I'm gonna show you how to clean the unit after you've done a makeup application. So you can just see how much makeup is really inside um, that gun and how to properly clean it. There is still some makeup in there. I did not spray it all out. So I'll do that when I turn the other camera back on. Uh, let's move our unit over and we will go ahead. And so you can see that there is some makeup still inside the cup. So I'm gonna grab my paper towel. I'm gonna turn my unit on and I'm going to spray out that iridescent shimmer until the cup runs empty. And there the cup is now empty. You can hear it gurgling. I'm gonna grab some of my alcohol, spray that in there, let it gurgle, and spray it out. So when I was letting the alcohol bubble up in there, all I was doing was just gently, I'm not pushing hard, I'm just blocking the air from flowing out. So it's so I'm just blocking the airflow gently, I'm not pushing, I don't wanna bend my needle, I just wanna cover the airflow. And then I pull back and what's happening is air is cycling through and it's causing it to bubble. That's how I also mix colors when I'm mixing colors. So if you have, you know, two different foundation colors that you want to use, I'll put like, you know, four drops of one, four drops of the other. And then I turn the unit on, I block the airflow and I just gently pull back on the trigger until those two colors mix together and it bubbles up. So the air is forcing the foundation to mix together. So that's how I mix colors within my cup itself. So you can do that as well. All right, let's grab some Q-tips. I ran out of the, I love using disposable lip brushes to clean the inside of that, the hole of my cup. Um, I ran out of my disposable lip brushes. So I'm using a professional lip brush, but
but we're going to take apart this entire unit and we're going to clean it out. So we're going to open it up, slide our needle out. I'm also going to take the nozzle off and then we're going to wipe this whole hand piece down. So I'm going to grab a tissue, grab some alcohol. First, I'm going to wipe my needle again. And when I'm putting it through, I'm kind of twisting. I don't know if you can see me twisting, but I'm twisting the needle. So I'm making sure that all of it is nice and clean. We're gonna set that aside using the rest of my tissue. I'm going to clean the very front. I'm gonna clean my trigger. In the inside of my cup. In the inside of my nozzle cap. Spray a little bit of alcohol in there. And I'm gonna use my brush. And I'm just gonna swoosh that around in that little opening just to make sure that I don't have any product in there. And then it's just gonna drip right out. And you'll see it's tinged. It's got makeup on there. I'm even wiping makeup onto the paper towel. I mean, it's not very, it's not a lot, but there's definitely makeup in there. Let that drip out. Get that nice and clean. I'm actually gonna turn my compressor on so air is kind of flowing through there so it can dry. Now you can also use um, makeup remover. This is called Take It All Off. Uh, it's an oil-free makeup remover. It's for your eyes, your face, your lips. It's a gentle spray. Um, and I actually will spray this sometimes in the unit and let that go through the unit just in case there's makeup stuck in there. You know, I just wanna make sure that it, that's gonna help dissolve the makeup. Um, but I, usually for the most part, I rarely, rarely use this. I'm always, I always use my isopropyl alcohol. I also use 90% alcohol. So it's, it's some strong alcohol. All right, so let's put our cap back on. Let's put our needle back in. Tighten that back up. Making sure it retracts. I can see my needle retracting and this is nice and clean and I can put it away. When I'm ready to do another application, I will just take the needle out one last time, give it a good wipe down just to make sure there's no dust or anything else on there. And then we're ready to do another makeup application. Um, so that is the maintenance of your airbrush unit. So, and that concludes our webinar for today. So thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Have a great day. Bye-bye.